Welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about persistent faith. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every time we prayed, prayed the promises of God rather than praying the problem, prayed in faith, in our secret place, praised the Lord, and we did all things right, and we had an instant manifestation. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It doesn't happen very often. Sometimes it takes time. But when we see testimonies online of how people had a suddenly moment and suddenly they were healed, our faith is stirred and we remind God, well, Lord, you've no favourites. If you did it for that person, you love me just as much as that person, so why don't you do it for me? However, we need to dig a little bit deeper and find out that behind the apparent rapid speed of the healing, there must have been a considerable time of getting into a position to receive the healing. We too need to get certain aspects of our life in order before the Holy Spirit can move and bring our breakthrough. Take a moment to read Hezekiah's good reign in 2 Chronicles 29. This good king of Judah, he did right in the sight of the Lord. And uh, he cleansed the temple in Jerusalem. He encouraged the Levites to return to the sacrificial sin offerings. Praise music was restored with singers and trumpeters, verses 27 to 30. The end of the chapter, verses 35 and 36. The burnt offerings and peace and drink offerings were in abundance. So the service of the house of the Lord, listen, was set in order. And Hezekiah rejoiced with all the people because of what God had prepared for the people, for it was done suddenly. So suddenly came after a lot of things were set in order. There was a lot of heart preparation of the king and the people for the temple offerings to be re-established before that got reinstituted. Now, we are temples of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and we need to get our temples in order. The problem is that we're too busy. If the devil can't make you evil, he'll make you busy. Busy in the pursuit of money to clear debts and getting out of relationships we should never have got into. This causes us to be spiritually deaf and blind, and we don't want to listen. A classic example of this is Jonah. He was called to deliver a message of repentance to the people of Nineveh. Instead, he took a boat to Tarshish in the opposite direction. It's a great story. Refresh your memory of that in the short little book of Jonah. After a brief detour of his plans to get away from God, he prayed from the secret place. Now, his secret place was a whale's belly and uh, the, the whale vomited him on shore near Nineveh and he went and delivered the message. What was this great message that was so difficult to deliver? Here it was. In 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth. That's Jonah 3, 4 and 5. Now the prophet did not know probably that in Nineveh, there had recently, in no time, anyway, in recent memory, there had been a total eclipse of the sun. And that had spooked them. They thought they didn't understand those things. And so with the eclipse plus the prophet, they repented and believed God and put on sackcloth and ashes. Jonah did not want to deliver the message. He got angry with God and he suffered the consequences. Now, I had a similar experience yesterday, walking my dogs on the edge of the village. There are new posh houses being built, and I've spoken to many people working in their gardens, amused by their obvious competition of who's got the best swimming pool or the best garden. A couple of weeks ago, the thought came to me of Psalm 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labour in vain. I pushed the thought away. I don't, and I know what you're saying, Lord. I don't want to give that kind of message. But I knew that the word that God had given me of that psalm was to be spoken over 
a particularly new home builder. I avoided it, but yesterday I was in pain, walking and, uh, you know, I told you I was in pain, pain at it. And I was walking past this house and the Holy Spirit challenged me to speak. So I stopped by the house and told the owner, you are labouring in vain. I can imagine the her reaction. He was working hard in his garden. I said, you are labouring in vain because unless you... Um, allow the Lord to be part of your house, you're labouring in vain. That's what the Bible says. I walked away uh, a little bit um, concerned by his reaction to me and I suddenly noticed that my left leg had stopped hurting. I stamped my foot in delight. I had delivered the message and the pain left. God was pleased. So obedience in telling people what God has told you to say is going to affect the speed of your um, healing and your speed of your manifestation. Now, obedience is what God wants. And, and if we're not obedient, then we'll get discouraged. The devil will tell us, your prayers are not being answered. If he was going to heal you, he would have done it a long time since. But we have to be persistent. Jesus told a parable to make the point that at all times men should pray and not give in and lose heart. That's in Luke 18 and verse 1 in the Amplified Bible. Many of you have been praying and believing, but because of no manifestation, you have been losing heart. Now check out if because of timidity and being afraid of men and what they're going to say to you if you speak, you have not been bold as a lion, Proverbs 18, verse 1. In your workplace, in your school, in your neighbourhood, and especially with your family. If you are bold and speak out, then in verse 8 of Luke 18, God will defend and avenge you quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, he's coming back, will he find this type of of persistent faith on the earth. Say this with me. Lord, I repent that I have stayed silent. I will be your mouthpiece. I will speak your word. I will not be afraid of the reactions of those around me. I am bold as a young lion and you will find persistent faith in me.